YouTube. Fellow motor cyclists, you crazy people out there. Wow. This is night four for me. Bit of a windy one. Already had what I think is a watering can bounce off my tent. But I can still hear my lad coughing in his room. That and he's screaming at his Xbox to be fair. I think he definitely got the better end of the deal, eh? <laughs> Locked in his bedroom, all his meals brought to him. Just to uh, spend time with his new Xbox. But uh, yeah, I've had a day of uh, trying to master video editing. What? Not master it, just get to grips with it. So you can let me know in the comments below the video before this one on night three see how that one turns out so yeah it's just uh, it's just me laying the tent in the garden rambling on it is a lot windier tonight then that's for sure i'm actually thinking about changing to me uh, oex fox 2 there's quite a bit more room in this one so day four of isolation my wife ran out of fags couldn't get hold of my son and uh could see the panic setting in. Eventually he answered his phone. So, <laughs> panic diverted. I was so lucky. I pretty much worked the first lockdown. So I was out every day riding a motorbike anywhere around the country that I wanted to. So this lockdown. Isolated as well, get it out of the way, hopefully. So, fingers crossed, this tent will still be here in the morning. Me in it, because it's not pegged down, it's on my decking. Tom basically just pops it up and I'm laying it until winter's coming now and then Adrian wants to fight back. I love a one tiger's hot tent with a stove in it right about now. It's on my list of tents to have. thinks I've got a tent fetish and I've only got three so I can't be that bad and to be fair there is only one more I want and that is the one tigress hot tent with a stove in it for the winter that really appeals to me it would be rather ideal for my circumstances right now Home will tell proof is in the bin. Just having that extra time from somebody to 
see you through it and nurse you through it made a really big difference for me. And then got myself home. So I had to live in the lounge, so I got an hospital bed in there. And uh, the day in my wheelchair came, because uh, I just didn't want to get in it. Not full of my money. And um, my wife, being a smart cookie, she says, uh, come on, I'm going to take you out, get some fresh air. I'll be in the car, which was another experience in itself. And, uh, we ended up at um, this address in the middle of nowhere, and she says, uh, come to uh, be a puppy. Which that much to my surprise. It's very more we've got two bulldogs at home, but they weren't allowed near me. It's a clumsy, around my legs. And uh, wife gets me in the wheelchair, takes me around the back of this property to look at these other two puppies, and uh, looks across uh, this woman's garden and uh, bear in mind it was like uh, end of June time it was a roasting hot day and there was this tiny tiny little puppy in a big cage with a cat harness on and uh, he was looking all sad and lost so I said let him out <laughs> so I let him out he come flying towards me I scooped him up put him on my lap in the wheelchair and that's, uh, that's where he stayed for seven months. I was in that wheelchair. He got me through it because uh, I went from not wanting to get in the wheelchair to um, having to. Because my wife said, it's your puppy, it's your responsibility. He's living down here with you in the lounge. You pick up after him. So I had to get in the chair, pick his shit out of the house. But he might give me a purpose as well. I get in the chair. Then we progressed from the wheelchair and the mobility scoop was next. He loved that. I used to let him run by the side of it, but he just uh, he just wanted to get on. He didn't want to jump back on. He didn't want to uh, be running around to him. Motorised transport was the way of the future. And for a little dog with little legs. So yeah, he quite liked the mobility scoop. And obviously went everywhere with me in the van. He just went everywhere with me. Um, he's got a bag on his hand for walking. If I go in a shop because I won't leave him outside. He comes in the bag. And uh, that's been our life for the last oh, two years. So June 2018, 2020 now, November. So just over two years. And I do still take him everywhere with me. I tend to leave him in the van a lot more at the moment because people want to fuss him. With COVID, I think he just got to put me out of me washing his head. So, uh, so yeah, he, uh, he is my best buddy, he really is. I know it's strange, my lad thinks it's strange. Big old tattooed dude. With a fanny rat, that's what he calls him. But he got me for a really dark time, and he still does, bless him on my feet at the minute so yeah I definitely saved him and he definitely saved me and like I say he still does now so many dark times to come we thought we're going through but positivity is the key that's for sure strange times isn't it but you've got to keep smiling otherwise you'll go do lally first thing I'm going to do once I get out of quarantine is get some new tyres on my bike and I think that's something I really need to do find solace in something that you get enjoyment from. This is a long time dead. I think that's me done for the night. Night number four, into day five. That's my birthday. <laughs> I'll see you on the flip side. Stay safe out there. Don't let it drop you down. Wow, a crazy world. I think I'm gonna get my head down, get some sleep. Hey, I'd appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, if you haven't already done so. And if you like the ramblings of a crazy old man and his dog. And uh, until the next time we meet, happy birthday to me.